This is a brief intro into protein structure by Dr. David Johnson at the James H. Quillen College of Medicine Department of Biomedical Sciences, uh, and this is uh, 2012, June 2012. The uh, structures of proteins are varied. Uh, proteins like hemoglobin, which carry oxygen, are very important, and you can see on the screen that it is a tetrameric structure that has four different subunits, red, purple, blue, two different colors of blue, and hemes uh, in there. The hemes are the where the oxygen binds. But uh, these are these are called, this is sort of a ribbon model, and you can see the curly Q, and that is the alpha helix structure, and we'll talk more about that later. But if you do a space filling, what this thing really is, takes up is this picture over here is a more globular protein, and uh, it has a uh, packed together very tightly. Other proteins like collagen and keratin of the hair are long fibrous proteins and here's collagen which has three polypeptide chains and there although it has a uh, curly Q to it it is not a, it is more like a wrapped rope it's not an alpha helix it is a uh, just a uh, collagen triple helix which is quite different. Now there are th four levels of protein structure. There's primary structure and that is just the amino acid sequence such as this is aspartic acid, tryptophan, glycine, and alanine from the amino terminus to the carboxy terminus over here. So amino acid sequence is primary structure. There are two elements of secondary structure that were discovered by Linus Pauling and one of them I have referred to before is called the alpha helix and you see that a lot of that in hemoglobin and then we also have the beta strand or the beta pleated sheet uh, as we sometimes refer to it. And then we have tertiary structure and tertiary structure is the overall folding so you might have beta pleated sheets, you may have alpha helix as part of it but the overall structure is here in the total, total folding of the protein and has different different structures. And so then <clears throat> the fourth level is quaternary structure. Hemoglobin has four subunits that fit together and tubulin has alpha and beta subunits that fit together to give it that structure. Knowing protein structure is very important to understanding the, how the body works, especially in terms of uh, hemoglobin function, structure and function, uh, various enzymes, how muscles work, how uh, DNA is replicated. All this stuff is done by proteins and so it's important to know how those work. The additionally all the drugs that we take or most of the drugs that we take interact with proteins in different ways uh, and that that can also influence how uh, the body functions. So what we, we're, the, we're going to focus right now on two uh, secondary structural elements, the alpha helix. And so what you see on the screen is actually an alpha helix. It's a polypeptide chain beginning, beginning out here with glycine as, as amino acid number one. And glycine is right here and it has a um, it is very simple in that it has two hydrogens on that alpha carbon. So this is the alpha carbon. <clears throat> now, the coloring of these uh, of this this polypeptide chain is carbons are gray, oxygens are red, nitrogens are blue, and hydrogens are white. So this is uh, so you can see the structure there. Now the only other colors we have are are yellow for cysteine or the sulfur in cysteine and yellow for the sulfur in methionine. So those are the structures you will see and we'll go through each one of these amino acids. This will also help you uh, consolidate some of your knowledge about amino acid structures hopefully. So glycine is the simplest amino acid. It does not have a DL isomer because there are just two hydrogens here. There's no asymmetric carbon in it. And then alanine has a methyl group, so it has this methyl group out here on the side, so it's, that's a, it's the next simplest amino acid. Valine is a little bit more, has one more branch, <coughs> or actually has two more carbons out here, and sort of forms a V-like structure. So valine, it, and it's very hydrophobic. Uh, there's no, it can't hydrogen bond. It likes other hydrophobic groups like isoleucine and, val and uh, phenylalanine and things of that sort. Okay. 
The next one after uh, valine is asparagine, and asparagine is an amide, so it has a nitrogen out here. It's been a form as an amide form of this carboxylic acid, aspartic acid. So it has the same basic structure as aspartic acid, but it's been amidated by this nitrogen out here. So this has 50% double bond character, just like the peptide bond, <clears throat> and so this does not ionize. So you get a no ionization. It can hydrogen bond, but it does not ionize. The next one is histidine number five, and it has an imidazole ring, and there are two nitrogens, one there and one here in the imidazole ring. And this has a pKa of about six and a half, and so it can ionize uh, in some cases in proteins. Generally, it's not charged in uh, most uh, uh, pro at physiological pH. And then there's aspartic acid, number six. Uh, aspartic acid has a carboxyl group up here, and so that carboxyl group is negatively charged. This has a pKa of about four, and so this is always neg negatively charged at physiological pH. Then uh, after aspartic acid, it's lysine, and lysine has a four carbon chain and an amino group at the end. This is the called the epsilon amino group. This has a very high pKa of 10 and a half and so it's always uh, positively charged at physiological pH. After lysine we have a serine and serine has a hydroxyl OH, so it has an oxygen here and a hydrogen out there, and that's a, a hydroxyl OH. And this does not that a, that does not ionize. It's more like a an alcoholic OH than a uh, acidic OH, so it doesn't come off there. And uh, after serine, we have uh, glutamine, which is one carbon longer than asparagine, and it too is an amide and does not ionize. So it's just uh, very similar to uh, asparagine in that regard. And then number 10 is tryptophan. And so here is the aromatic ring, double aromatic ring of tryptophan that absorbs light at 280 nanometers in proteins. And it has a nitrogen in this five-membered ring, and then it has a six-membered ring uh, conjugated to it. Uh, after tryptophan, we have threonine, and threonine is a cousin of serine and it has both a hydroxyl group out here and a methyl group so it has it can hydrogen bond here and have hydrophobic interactions here so threonine and then the next one is arginine arginine is the most basic amino acid it has the highest pka it has a pka of 12 and a half so it always has a positive charge out here so it has these three nitrogens out here in this guanidinium group on the side chain and so this is always positively charged after uh, arginine we have phenylalanine and so phenylalanine is here and so it's an aromatic ring stuck onto alanine and so that's why it's called phenylalanine it's a phenyl group stuck onto alanine and it's very hydrophobic and has a lot of hydrophobic interactions <clears throat> then cysteine is uh, very much like serine except that it has a hydro it has a sulfur and a hydrogen out here and this hydrogen can ionize it ionizes at about pK, a pH of 8.5 so it has a pKa of 8.5 so generally at physiological pH this has a, uh, an H on it and this can form uh, this can be uh, reduced uh, uh, sorry, oxidized to form disulfide bonds, so it can, it can react a bit, and so you'll see about the, the importance of disulfide bonds later. And then after 14 is 15 leucine. It has a big, it's uh, one carbon longer than valine, and so it has a lot of hydrophobic interaction out here. It's very hydrophobic uh, amino acid. And then uh, after 15, there's 16 is tyrosine. Tyrosine is just like phenylalanine, except it has an alcoholic OH out here that can hydrogen bond. This, this one can also ionize. This is a phenolic OH. And it can ionize, but only ionizes at about pH 10. So generally at physiological pH, it's, it's as the hydroxyl group out here, an alcoholic OH, sort of like an alcoholic OH and can hydrogen bond, but cannot, does not, is not ionized at physiological pH. 
Uh, then uh, after tryptophan, we have isoleucine. Let me see if I can move it down a little bit. So here's isoleucine up here. Um, so here's isoleucine, and it is also very hydrophobic uh, as well, and so it's in, involved in, in hydrophobic interactions. And then I, after isoleucine, we have glutamic acid, and so glutamic acid is has a very negative charge out here. It has a carboxyl group that's negatively charged at physiological pH because it too has a pKa of about four. And then finally, we have methionine at the C terminus. So this is the methionine at the C terminus. It has two carbons and a sulfur and another methyl group here. So this sulfur does not ionize because of the presence of this methyl group. You do, do not get this ionized. So here we've got our polypeptide chain from uh, left to right. We have the amino terminus out here at the glycine and the uh, carboxy terminus down here at the methionine. And uh, so I'm going to, uh, one of the things I'm going to do is turn off the uh, labels so you don't see the amino acids, but I am going to turn on monitors of hydrogen bonds so you see the hydrogen bonding. Now if we turn this alpha helix on its end here so you can look down the helix, you can see the amino acid side chains or residues as they're often referred to sticking out from that alpha helix. And so this is very, uh, this is the way this is this structure is organized. The backbone of the polypeptide chain is responsible for the helical structure here, and it is held together by hydrogen bonding. As you can see, here is an example. One right here is the carboxyl group. Uh, this oxygen on this carboxyl group here, this glycine is hydrogen bonded to this hydrogen on this nitrogen here. So this, this nitrogen is electronegative, making that hydrogen electro po uh, po making it positive. So it has that hydrogen has a slightly positive charge and this oxygen has a slightly negative charge and therefore these two hydrogen bond. So we have lots and lots of these hydrogen bonds and every uh, so every amino acid, it's about a 3.6 amino acids per turn of the helix. And this is something that Linus Pauling figured out, and for that he won the Nobel Prize. So this is this basic basic structure. And we can spin this to make it, uh, you can see it a little more like um, in 3D if you have it spinning. And so you can look down the alpha helix and see it spin, and you can get a gist of how, how this structure goes together. Now a great example of the alpha helix is human hemoglobin. And here we have four subunits put to, held together. Uh, they're held together by non-ionic, uh, non-covalent uh, interactions, hydrophobic interactions, ionic bonds, hydrogen bonding, van der Waals forces. All this comes together to put this, hold this tetramer together. And so we have two alpha chains, they're red and uh, sort of purple or red reddish, and then two different shades of blue, the other beta chains, so the alpha chains and the beta chains. And so you can see that the curly Qs are all the alpha helix, and hemoglobin's about 75% alpha helix. The other form of secondary structure is the beta pleated sheet. And this is, shows you the beta sheet, and you can see the sequence here. And uh, you can, uh, it also has a lot of hydrogen bonding. Now, with the beta sheet, you turn it on side, you'll see that the R groups are pointing up above the plane. This is the plane of the, of the beta sheet and the R groups point above and the R groups point below and so here you have them sticking up and down. Now, where do you find beta pleated sheets? You find them in Lens Crystalline for one example and you also find them in Silk. In Silk, virtually all these amino acids are glycine so consequently these sheets are able to pack together very tightly makes a very strong structure, a very smooth structure. That's why Silk has its unique properties of being strong and smooth. And again, you have the hydrogen bonding between the carboxyl groups and the hydrogen on the nitrogens of the backbone of the polypeptide chain. So again, we can spin this and you can see it uh, going around and around so you can see how the 3D structure fits together quite well and how those hydrogen bonds stabilize, stabilize that structure. 
a good example of the uh, beta pleated sheet is the uh, crystalline of the human eye and this shows the beta pleated sheets in blue and the some slightly alpha helical regions in red so it's primarily beta pleated sheets and with a little alpha helix thrown in as well and that's the end good talking with you these are very important proteins i hope this adds to your knowledge of protein structure and function uh, and